Kaina Yawanze, uh, President of the International Fund for Agricultural Development, IFAD. Uh, this is my first uh, visit to Argentina. It's not my first to the, to the region. I've been to Brazil uh, about a year and a half ago. Um, essentially, in my work, I do enjoy visiting uh, programs and projects in countries that we support. And um, for Argentina in particular, I wanted to see how IFAD uh, collaborates with countries that are described as middle income countries and to see our role in supporting government efforts and working with communities, uh, particularly, of course, uh, in rural, rural areas of the country. So, President Nuanze, uh, Argentina is a is a, a, a very large middle income country. It's an emerging economy. The per capita income is around seven thousand five hundred uh, dollars a year. Why is an organization like EFAD relevant within this context? Um, I think the impression people have is that. Buenos Aires is Argentina, and so they see that part of uh, Buenos Aires that is uh, growing new economy, and they do not realize that in Argentina itself, you have provinces like where we are now in Chaco uh, that have levels of poverty that could be as high as 30 percent. Um, Chaco, my understanding is that it's per capita, it's about four thousand, four thousand five hundred dollars. Now that is that is practically about half what it is in national average. Now government efforts in countries like Argentina to recognize the importance of smallholder agriculture, smallholder production in its economy uh, provides a unique opportunity for an institution like IFAD where we bring in knowledge, we bring in our expertise in the organizational aspects of uh, small farmers uh, who together can form associations and cooperatives. We also bring uh, technology and we bring the over 30 years of experience we have had in uh, agriculture and rural development. Speaking of knowledge, uh, how do we take the policy dialogue platforms that we see in the Mercosur and Argentina uh, and use this new definition of family farmers and this new recognition of family farming as a productive asset to the economy and replicate it for the rest of the world and use what we've learned here to, uh, to help eradicate poverty? Well, it is good that you ask this question because uh, five years ago, you would not be talking about family agriculture in the same context that we are today. But the advocacy work we have done in Argentina is a good example where um, before uh, 2004, where the Ministry of Agriculture did not exist. It was a, a secretariat within an, another ministry. Today we have a Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock and Fisheries, and within that, a couple of years ago, they established this unit that is called UCA, U-C-A-R in, in, uh, uh, in, in Spanish abbreviation, which specifically focuses on family agriculture, recognizing the role of family agriculture, where in a country like, like Argentina, uh, Particularly in the provinces that we have, we have visited, in Chaco and Misiones, we produce 82% of Argentina's goats, 33% of its milk, and 64% of its swine production. Now, you cannot talk about a growing economy if you do not recognize that subsector that produces so much of its agricultural growth. The point is recognizing first and foremost by government the role of smallholder production in its agricultural sector. Many other countries in the world, particularly in Africa, do not even provide the necessary framework for smallholder product producers to benefit. 
from economic growth. The knowledge we gather here, we are able to, for instance, now uh, facilitate South-South cooperation between countries like Brazil uh, and African countries, particularly uh, South Africa, where we have been able to bring farmers from South Africa to visit uh, farming communities in Brazil and Brazilian farmers also to, to transfer their knowledge. So here again, South-South cooperation is one major uh, vehicle that we can use to transfer knowledge in countries like Latin America where they have advanced tremendously in what, what you refer to as family agriculture. And if I get this is just one last follow-up question. If I gave you six billion dollars to invest in rural development and rural empowerment, where would you invest that money and how? How much was it? Six billion. Uh, six billion dollars. Uh, <clears throat> I would be looking at, well you know actually if you gave me six billion dollars that is the money my institution spends in six years. We have an average of one billion dollars investment in loans and grants worldwide. Of that, about 40% is invested in Africa, 15% uh, to 20% here in Latin America, 35% in Asia. So you can see exactly where the needs are. But I will put my focus on increasing production and productivity at the farm level. I will invest in empowerment of women and youth because women play a pivotal role in agricultural development. I'll invest in technology development, rural financing, natural resource management, and capacity building. Now, with these major areas, these major themes, I'll be looking at rural communities where we'll be creating the opportunities for farmers to link to markets, the whole value chain, so that not only are you talking about increasing production and productivity, but farmers have to have the opportunities to access markets. As one of the farmers said to us today, it would not make sense for us to introduce new technologies if we do not have markets where we can sell our produce. So you can see the whole issue here is creating opportunities for employment, family agriculture, smallholder agriculture provides several, several outputs. One, you have social integration, social cohesion, you, have, you create opportunities for employment, you create roles for women and youth. So you, you are able to reverse the migration from, urban, from rural to urban back to the urban. You create a totally different environment where the rural economy becomes vibrant and attractive for the young population to stay. And they are the ones that are going to feed the world come 2050 when we're looking at 9 billion human, human people to feed.